this is called a Turing pattern. This was created using something called difference clouds in Photoshop. There's a filter called clouds and there's one called difference clouds and difference clouds are creating a type of noise. You're creating a randomization of pixels. What you can do is you create a new file or create this file that's a thousand, doesn't matter really what size, but I'll make it a thousand by a thousand pixels. And then the way you make this procedural is you turn it into a smart object. The smart object is the way that you can create something that's non-destructive. You can change parameters from something that you did earlier to create more random results later on. That's the idea behind proceduralism. You can say generative art. That's another word for it. What I do with this file is I go into the background, I right click, and then I can right click on this and I can turn this into a smart object. Now that it has this little icon in the lower right hand corner, it's now a smart object. And when I apply some sort of filter to it, I can adjust the filter later on. I think I showed you this already, but with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter, go to render and pick difference clouds. What difference clouds does is it will take your foreground and your background color and basically use that to create a randomization of the values between those two colors to create this type of random noise. But it's an e equally spread out type of noise going from white to black. And that's how you get this cloud effect. It's called difference clouds. The reason this one, there's a one called clouds. If you go to filter and you pick clouds, it's doing the same thing. What difference clouds will do if you keep on repeating the difference clouds, it basically is applying a difference blend mode. You get this type of effect. If you ever want to get marvelizations like really quickly, you take difference clouds and you add them on top of each other. It's also a great way to get cracks and lightning because if you apply a difference cloud on top of a difference cloud and you go into levels like this, what you can do is you can start to play with the levels and you can start to pull out some of the details right here. You get this like localization, or you can start to do like lightning or cracks in a surface. Basically you're reducing the number of grayscale values to get some of those areas where the difference blend mode multiply the pixels together. That's the technique that people will use sometimes. I'm not using difference clouds in this circumstance for that. I'm just using it to lay down a base to play with, to get to the Turing pattern that I showed you earlier. Once you add the clouds on top of that, you add some noise. So you add, just go in here and you can add noise and you can just use add noise. And what add noise does, it add noise is just giving you a general type of noise that's distributed throughout and it blends it in with the clouds itself. You get a couple options, Gaussian and uniform. Gaussian and uniform is just changing the distribution and monochromatic will keep it within a grayscale range. If you don't click that on, it actually adds colored noise. But for this, we just want monochromatic. You add a little bit of noise to this. We have, oh, I don't need the clouds in there, but it doesn't matter. But you have difference clouds. Actually, I'm going to take this one off. This was added just to show you the example. I have difference clouds and noise. So they're all part of this smart object. And you can go into any one of these, double click and bring up the, this dialogue here to blend it in, or you can, and there should be. And then you can double click here and you can change and adjust something after you added it to the actual layer itself. So you can go in here and you can change things by double clicking on the name, or you can blend it in by double clicking on this icon here. There's two different things that you can do. You can blend it in a little bit if you want, or you can play with this add noise. This kind of creates like a foundation for this procedure, but it's just noise. You have two types of noise. You have clouds and you have this distributed noise mixed in with the clouds. To get the pattern, what you do is you create a action and the action is going to repeat over and over again. And it's eventually going to cluster together the white pixels and the black pixels. Eventually you'll get this kind of connected type pattern because you have groupings of pixels. I already did it here, but I'll do another one. I'm going to already have the action set up, but I'm just going to create a new action. I'm just going to hit the little plus box here to create a new action. This is called reaction diffuse too. This is the scientific name for it. I'm going to hit record. And what you do with this noise is you go in and go into filter and you blur it out a little bit. We're going to go into blur and do a Gaussian blur and Actually, no, I think I'm going in the wrong order. First, I'm going to 
go into other and go into high pass. And what this does is it just basically makes the grayscale values closer to gray. It's taking your darks and your lights and shifting them closer to a 50% gray. That's going to blend in the noise a little bit. That's the first step. Then the next step is to go into image and to go into adjustments and pick threshold. And threshold, what that will do is find like that grayscale value again and bring the grayscales together. So I'm going to add that threshold and then I'm going to blur it. I will go into filter and I will go into blur and I'll pick Gaussian blur and keep it like on a three and hit okay with that. Once I get this set up and it's recorded, I'm going to hit stop and then I'm going to hit play and I'm going to hit play a bunch of times. And eventually you're going to reach a certain point where it's not going to really go beyond what you want to do. It's going to basically coalesce though, the darks and the lights together, and you'll get this maze like pattern and it's a little blurry, but if you zoom into it, you can see it's a little blurry, but what you can do once you get to a final point and you can see how many times I've done this here, it all stacks up in the smart object. All those parameters can be adjustable, but once you get to a final point where you feel like this diffusion reaction has occurred, you can sharpen it. And I like to go into sharpen and go into the smart sharpen and then push those values up and you get something like this. And that's like the end result. You can see this maze like pattern. And then what you can do, since it's procedural, you can go to the very bottom and you can click on difference clouds and clicking on difference clouds basically will add, change the clouds. And then you can even go into noise maybe and adjust the noise and that's going to change it. You can come up with different patterns with this. Let's see here. This was the one I did. I may have some different settings here, but just connecting in different ways. If you play with your noise settings, if you play with your difference of the, if you add difference clouds on top of difference clouds, it's going to give you a different pattern.